Hello and welcome to another video from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs. Stuart Smith as always in the workshop and today we have a Fender Blues Junior, yet another one up on the bench. Bit of an unusual problem this, which is why I thought I'd make a video of it. The client says that uh, occasionally the front LED or bulb goes off and the valves uh, don't light up and then suddenly one or two of them will spring back to life glowing and the bulb will come on and it'll go off again. So um, since the bulbs are in parallel with the heaters of the valves I'm wondering if it's something to do with the 6.3 volt supply. But anyway let's power it up and see if we can reproduce what the customer says is happening with this amp. Okay here we go I've got it plugged in and let's turn it on. Okay no lamp at all but I can hear a faint humming from the amp. Not sure if you can hear that but that tells me that it's nothing to do with fuses or mains power. Power is getting to this amp. So I think I'll take the back off and have a look and see round the back and see if we've got any voltages, see what's going on there. Okay, so turn the amp on. I can definitely hear that humming. So we definitely have power going here. Um, let me... I think I'll just check to see if we've got any HT. Right, I'm just going to dab across this capacitor here. Okay, oh, uh, hold on AC, let's turn that to DC. Yep, 365 volts there, we've got HT. And across these other caps, 365, 360, 365. So we've got HT, um, no light on the front, and no valves lighting up. These valves are all stone cold. So it's something to do with a 6.3 volt heater. We may have blown our heater winding, of course. So um, let me identify the heater wires and then we can measure to see if we've got any heater voltage coming out of the transformer. I'll turn it off for the moment. Now I'm going to be especially careful with this because none of the valves are lit and so even though I've turned it off these caps will all be fully charged and they won't go down either. Let's see if we can prove that by the amps off at the moment. Look at that. 363 volts on there. Amp is off. And it's just going down by one volt every <laughs> three seconds. With the valves on, of course, that, that would just discharge quickly. So we have to discharge those caps and uh, get rid of that voltage before we do anything more. And to do that, I'm going to use my homemade capacitor discharge tool. It's just a switch with a I think it's got a 100 ohm resistor at a couple of watts in there and that just discharges any power. So we'll clip this onto the negative, press discharge and then just quite a spark there. Maybe I should make that resistor a little bit bigger, 100 ohms a bit small. But anyway, that's just discharged completely now. Looks good. Now we can double check just to make sure we've got no voltage there. There'll be a few volts, but nothing to worry about. Yeah, hey, look, three and a half volts. So we're good to go. And uh, right now the um, heater wires are these green wires here. And they go to two spade terminals there. So I think we can do a lot worse than just seeing if we can get the meter on there. AC-wise. And um, let's see what's on there. I can hear the hum, that tells me the amp is on, and I can get on these terminals here if I'm careful. There and there. Ah, interesting. Okay, we've got 7.5 volts AC, so that's fine. That's interesting. Okay, so the 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 voltage is coming out of the um, transformer, okay, but the valves are stone cold, so it's not getting through to the valves for some reason. Right, I'm going to turn off again. 
Um, I'll discharge again and then I'm going to see if I can find out how this gets from here down to the actual heaters where we need them. Right, I don't have a board layout for this amp, I've got the schematic, but these two greens here, they come from the mains transformer, they go into these two tags here, and then right next to them, look, are two more greens that come out and loop down to the board, so it's my belief that these two greens here are taking the heater voltage down to the subboard. I've put a meter on, you can't quite see that, but there are just two terminals there where these green wires go in, and there's no voltage there at all. So, as, as I say, without a board layout, it's hard to say, but my belief is that this is connected to there by a track, and that is connected to there by a track. So there's voltage here, but there's nothing here. So it kind of has to be a dry joint behind here, or a, a um, break in the track there, I don't know. Quite unusual, but I'm afraid it means I'm going to have to take the board out, which, um, you know, is not particularly easy on this amp but uh, it's doable. To take the board out, this little sub-board has to come out. It's just the two jack sockets. And uh, obviously the screws have to come out. One, two, three, four. I usually take out this cable tie here to loosen up these wires. And then you have to get your hands in and push down, take the knobs off obviously, push down really hard on here to just ease the shafts of these pots past this lip here and it just about goes, allowing you to tip the board forward. So um, I'll do that and uh, see if we can have a look behind that board because I can't think what else it can be. I'm pretty convinced, you know, two greens, two greens, you know, going down to here, it's got to be, got to be um, correct. Now where does the, ah, this is interesting, before I get too excited here, okay, now this, this red and white here is the lamp and that is going into the board here. up there. So why is that going up there? I would have thought that would have come in you know, kind of around down here somewhere to pick up the 6.3 volts. That's interesting. I looked at the schematic and this lamp is just paralleled, I think, across the 6.3 volts. Interesting. Hmm. Alright. Well I don't think we can do a lot more without pulling the board down. So let's get on with that. Right, I've done a fair old few of these in my time. First thing is the knobs have to come off. I don't think I've documented the uh, stripping down of a Fender Blues Junior, so I think I'll leave this in as long as the video doesn't become too long. lever these knobs off, take the input jack nut off, taking the board out will also give us a chance to just have a quick look behind this input jack because often the uh, connections on that become desoldered too. One, two, right that's all we can do from that end. cable tie, freeze up all these, uh, then I think the next thing to do is to take out the screws, haven't had this problem before, a new one on me. I can't imagine what's happened behind here. I don't imagine track burning out with heater voltages, I don't know. Strange. Two. Any more? Yeah, another one. Six. I 
first time I did this it took me absolutely forever and with much trepidation now I think bored out of blues junior yeah fine no problem six not it anymore oh, another one up here good lord seven of these screws crazy now that board does look pretty loose now Now we have to get fingers in. <coughs> oh no, I beg your pardon. I have to um, take out this stub board first. Learn the hard way when I uh, was first doing this. The other thing I also do is to mark the. On these Blues Juniors, there's no indication about where the speaker goes and where the extension speaker goes. So you end up, I've been fooled a few times, you end up putting it all back together, plugging this into here. And you get kind of low volume sound. You think, oh god, what's going on now? So I um, just marked the <coughs> marked the speaker input. <coughs> right. Go. Oh. So this little subboard comes out. Look. Like that, but I don't, I don't bother taking it out any more than that. <coughs> you have to do that, otherwise this board won't go down past this board here. Yeah, so now it's pushing your fingers up in here, and it's pretty difficult to find a place where you can actually grab hold of this. Another little. Oh yes, I yes, that's all coming back to me now. I do have a stripped down procedure for this, but because I'm cocky, I haven't looked at it. Um, this red needs to come out. It won't. Um... It's very tight. This red. It won't allow the board to come down. And this little bundle here is a pain as well. You have to almost push that in there to get the board to go past. This is a bit of a mission doing this, I must admit. Now you can get your fingers under. Just what's stopping this now? I've got stopping this is this um, lamp lead here. Let's free that up. Let's got it through to here, the pots. We need to go further than that to get it out. I don't think any of these have to come off. I think these all all come down. You can just you have to use quite a bit of force pushing down as hard as I can on this. This red wire is hooked around the corner of the board here, that wasn't helping. Let's try again. No! That will not go down. Okay, what's stopping it? I'm using a lot of force on there. It doesn't want to go. Yeah, this bit here won't go down. Oh yes, it's this little bundle here. All right, pain this little bundle. Let's see if I can get that cable tie out. I'm filming this kind of live, just so you can see how difficult this is. All right, it's got that cable tie out there. It's this little bundle here that stops the board going down. Okay, it's looking a bit more 
from the sink. There we go. Whew. Whoa. Not easy. Okay. That is how you remove the board from a Fender Blues Junior. Okay, interesting. Well, here are the two spade terminals, look, here and here, green and green. One of them just goes straight off to the green going out, and the other goes through a fuse to the green going out. Now, as you might expect, I checked the fuse before I did all this, and the fuse was fine. Uh, the actual fuse was fine, I just measured across the fuse, but I haven't measured across here. And, um, you yeah, know, do we have a high... Do you have a bad connection on that fuse or something like that? There's one side of the fuse holder, this one here, and there's the other side of the fuse holder, that one there. So the first thing I'm going to do is put a meter across there and see if we have any continuity. Now, of course, so I can see what I'm doing. I can also just meter out these connections through to the green because something's happening here. And the likely candidate is the fuse holder. Okay, you won't be able to see what I'm doing here, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing and I want to measure across the fuse holder which is it's here to here so there's a beep there's the fuse holder all oh, right okay so we ha we do have continuity all right well come on do we have continuity between this spade connector and the outgoing green yes do we have continuity between this spade connector and the other outgoing green yes That's very strange. That can't be right because we we measured no voltage on the on the outgoing greens here. We measured a voltage on the incoming greens. Hmm. What's going on now? Okay, there's the fuse holder there, and uh, when I waggled the fuse, it was a little bit loose in there, so I've tightened up those two prongs there and put the fuse back in. Could it be as simple as that? What I'm planning on doing is powering this up in this situation. You know, we have live connections hanging around, around here, we've got this board hanging out. Um, nothing will touch back there. I think we can power this up. And then all I'm going to do, I'm not going to get involved in measuring or touching on that arrangement, I just want to see basically does the light come on and uh, do the valves light up because if they do, it probably was just a loose fuse holder, which would be annoying, but anyway, there you go. Let's have a go then. Okay, here we go. Turn on. No. I can hear that low level hum. We have no power light there. And we have no valves lighting up. How weird. Well, I'm going to have to try somehow and get onto these two. Here are the two greens here coming out to the subboard. Um, <clears throat> very strange. Okay. All right, turn off again. Discharge again. I'll, I will. And then I'm just going to have a, you know, a more closer look and see. I might be able to, I should be able to beep out from there. Up to, up to the spade terminal, and from there up to the spade terminal. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, um, progress. This is the fuse. Looks perfectly okay. You probably can't see, but it's got its wire absolutely intact. But it's open circuit. Now I know I measured that by putting a meter across the fuse holder, and it beeped out at you know pretty much a short circuit. So I assumed the fuse was okay. But let me show you the kind of beginner mistake I made there. So here's a little sketch of the schematic. So this is the winding, 6.3 volt winding on the transformer. Here's our fuse. And let's say it just goes through one valve heater and then back. So if this is working, 6.3 volts across here, through the fuse, the, the valve lights up. I put my meter across here and here and got a short circuit, or I got a beep. You know, one ohm or something, so I just assumed the fuse was good. But look, look what's happening here. We've got a very low impedance winding here, maybe one ohm or something. So I'm going from, let's say, let's say this fuse is open circuit. So there's no 
connection between those two terminals, that one and that one. One side of the meter on there, one side of the meter on there. We go through a kind of one ohm here, and we go through a kind of one ohm here, and it beeps out and says, yeah, pretty much a short circuit. And I assumed the fuse was good. Now, um, my guess is that this is a faulty fuse. It's not blown. Well, you know, you, the, I don't know if you can see the, see that wire perfectly intact in there. So my guess is that might have been kind of making and breaking on here, and that's why sometimes he got the the bulb and sometimes he didn't. So my view is if I pop a, another fuse in there, 5 amp, put this all back together, well I'll turn it on first with the fuse in, and my guess that'll be that'll be a job done and we didn't have to take the board out. Well, we did have to take the board out of course because it's a fault finding process. So let me see if I can locate another one of these fuses. Okay, the fuse was a time delay 5 amp, so I popped another one in, and if this light comes on, I'm happy. I don't need to see the valves light up. It'll prove that we are in business. So let's check, hopefully. Oh, look at that. Okay. So we had there a kind of um, intermittent fuse. Good. I think that's all we need to do on this. Uh, whilst these pots are out, it's always a good idea to clean this because you don't often get the chance. I've had a look behind the input jack here and all of those solder joints are good. Quite often with the jack going in and out, they move around and they can become dry jointed. So I'm going to discharge again on this amp, clean this up, and then um, put the board back in. And since this is a relatively short video, I'll show you the struggle to put the board back in, which is equally as bad as getting it out. This amp's actually very clean, so I don't even need to use anything on this. I'm just going to give it a bit of a polish with some kitchen towel. And that's all we need to do. Now I just realised I've forgotten to discharge the caps. That's the sort of thing that happens, you get a little bit distracted, particularly when you're making videos. Very easy to get distracted. If you get to do something, end up shocking yourself. So I'm just going to do that now. Clip onto the negative. Press discharge. Now oh, that was actually fairly discharged. Oh, well, of course, yes, interesting, yes. That was discharged because the valves were getting warm and so they were drawing a bit of current. And that discharged those caps. Good. So I'll reposition the camera, have a go at getting this board back in. Right, well, reverse procedure, really. You know, joggle the board in as best you can. And then get your fingers down here. Uh, I push up on there as well. I use a lot of force for this. I took all my strength to do that. It only just comes out this board. I bet it wasn't designed to come out either, but that's pure luck that the board will actually come out without disconnecting every single wire on it. Um, companies don't make things to be dismantled, don't care about that. They just make things to be cheap. So that's a stroke of luck on this and patchery. Right, now I'm going to put the input jack nut on and I'll just kind of hold it in place so it doesn't spring out again. Again, I don't like these fender input jacks. It, it takes about half a turn to do this. Or maybe one, one and a half, one turn on that. It's just got hardly any thread. That's good. Now we can put the screws back in. here. Once you've got one in, the others go in pretty straightforwardly. Although we didn't actually have to take the board out on this, um, I think, I hope it's been useful for you to see how to actually remove the board on a Fender Blues Junior, because sometimes you do have to get to the back to change a component. So we've got one screw, let's do one this side now, that'll get the board kind of centred. There we go, it's going in quite nicely. We have to remember to put our 
spade terminal we'll back onto. I've pulled a couple of those off. Okay, next thing to do is to put this board back in. A little bit awkward because it has these um, shape proof washers on. And of course, if you put them on here, they just fall off. So you have to sort of position them here over the holes and hope to be able to joggle the board in without um, disturbing them. Just about do that. Yeah, that's, that's gone actually quite smoothly. So that's those in. They're two different sorts of jack, of course, so God knows why, but there you go. Do up those nuts. And the only thing we have to do now is to tighten these and get these leads back in. There's a few hanging out there at the moment. Let's turn this up this way. Tighten these two. Don't over tighten these, just 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 tight. Don't put any kind of torque on them. They can't take it. Whilst I'm here, I'm gonna plug the speaker in and that handy dot reminded me where the speaker went. Right, there are two greens here which are kind of hanging off, so I'm going to push those on firmly. Memory, I just connected a brown and a red. So here's the brown, handily marked brown, that's one side of the output transformer, and here's red, handily marked red, and there's the other side of the output transformer, or the center tap of the output transformer, actually. Good, that is actually finished now. I've got to put the logs back on. Why don't we power it up and make sure we can hear something from it? So we turn it on there, turn it on here, the lights come on, valves are lighting up, I can see. Well, that's interesting. Oh, yes, ah, that's interesting, yeah. Okay, now do we have a. Yes, he sent us something a bit weird about these output valves that. Ah, yes, this, I can see that the um, glow on that valve there. Just coming and going. He said that he uh, felt we had to waggle it around in the socket. Yes, as I waggle that around in the socket, that starts glowing. And this one goes off too. Yeah, these are very, uh, very shonky. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. So we've got another problem here, totally unrelated to. Well, I'll say, yeah, I think it's probably unrelated. Let's just see what the state of play of discharge is here. Discharged and we're off at the mains. Right, so what's going on with these valves here? He said that he had to waggle them round in the socket to get the valves to glow. So I'm just going to pull them out. Now I'm going to get my head in there and have a look to see if there are any dry joints on on the underside of that board, particularly on the heater side. Well actually all the joints on the underside of that valve look pretty rubbish to me. I'm just going to go in there and go over all of them and uh, I thought I'd show you this because it's not going to be easy with these ribbon cables here to get to them. Yeah, they, I don't like the look of any of these. Let's just go over all of them and hope that this will actually, oh yeah they're terrible actually. Hope this will actually solve our problem. Okay, that's that valve. This one's slightly more difficult because of the uh, ribbons in the way. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Just watching, I don't touch the iron on this ribbon cable here. Now it's getting difficult. Six, seven, eight. Good. That's good. Off the mat it, what are the preamp valves like?
Not too bad. Right, I'm hoping that we get lucky here. <coughs> I'm also just a hell of it going to clean the valve bases with a bit of deoxid. Okay, there we go. Pop the valves back in. They feel okay, they don't feel loose. I'm hoping it's going to be those dry joints on the base there. Let's see how lucky we get. Turn on the mains, turn on here, okay, there we go, right, both of these are lighting, which is good, but more importantly, what happens when we waggle? Oh, look at that, oh, what a result, oh, I like that. So that was dry joints on that valve base, let's plug a guitar in and see if we have any sound through this thing, it would be useful, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. <coughs> That, but that's all great. Does the reverb work? Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, reverb's working. Master, middle, bass. The result, folks. I'm going to put a few cable ties around here. Put the back on, and that's job done. I'm, uh, that's quite a nice little fix, that. Although we took the board out and didn't sort of have to. Uh, maybe I could have, yeah, I suppose I could have popped that fuse and tested it rather than fooling myself there. But we certainly didn't lose anything by taking that board out. It showed you how the board comes out on this, which is a useful sort of thing anyway. And we were able to, to, to uh, check the back of that input jack. Uh, I'm justifying myself, but hey, you know, there we go. That's how it went. I like you to see these things as I do them rather than being a miracle man and I go straight to the fault, I fix it and you know it all looks fantastic. Good. Okay, there you go. Um, quite a little fun repair that. I enjoyed doing that one, not sure why. Maybe I did a little bit more work than I needed to taking that board out but 50-50 hindsight's a great thing and all you can ever do is follow a kind of sequential fault finding process. So. Uh, high resistance fuse, an uh, intermittent fuse, strange one. Um, never seen that before. Well, not that I can remember anyway. The fuse is usually either blown or not. In this case, it, uh, the wire was intact, but there was no connection. And I think a useful little, little uh, diversion there where I fooled myself by just sticking the meter straight across the fuse and uh, believing I had a short circuit there. Um, I think I kind of knew that one from in the past. So <laughs> oh, anyway, there you go. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.